got it. I got it. I don't got it. First day of class, but I'm surprised that she made it. Her booty's hidden in public, but that's just Instagram famous. Fleaky eyebrows, no tweezers. Bet that she can hide her features. The only time she's not on Snapchat is when she ties her sneakers, likes to wear makeup, and it usually. What's up, machine freaks? Welcome to today's vlog. I don't know if you can tell, but where the heck is the Kodiak? It's outside. It's an absolute disaster in here today. I destroyed the garage, like completely. Don't even know in the club when that shit opens, but she's staying till it closes. And VIP with all the bottles that she. Look at all of that junk. So I'm going to keep this spot on reserve right now. This is kind of the work area just for the next few days. Saying that, we're gonna grind this thing up, etch it, and then paint it. It'll be ready to go on the Kodiak. And VIP with all the bottles that she don't even own. You're not rich? Well, damn, your chance is probably gone. The only FaceTime you'll get is if you answer your phone. She got me buying drinks. I know she working, dropping low and shit. I only bought the drink for once I'm back. Let's see how close I get. Maybe she will notice it, but the truth is probably not. The rear rack ended up going relatively well. I think it was more tricky, Ricky, to put it on than paint it. Because as you guys know, I welded up the frame, cut the frame, modified the frame, fabricated the frame. Wondering how did I get so low? I thought you were a 10, something more than a friend. Now I'm tired of the same old hoes. All the time that we spent was a waste in the end. Like, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. Feeling so low, 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 low. Yeah, yeah. There are two things that you've probably noticed by now, and that's one, the rack is on. The type of girl that never ever leave the party type. The type that's and two, it's the next day. I had to give the rack a couple hours to dry. Granted, it's extremely cold in New York. I had to fire up my torpedo heater and let it warm up while I was inside. I treat all racks with respect. Yesterday, as you guys saw, this heap was actually outside. But after I turned the camera off and I went outside to grab it. The thing didn't really want to start. It sounded like it was like hydro locked or something. So I'm going to take the spark plug out and see if maybe the carburetor is leaking into the cylinder. Well, the gas from the carburetor is leaking into the cylinder. The first couple times I started this thing up, it ran like a top. Some word of advice. There's usually two different sized spark plugs. I understand there's a couple different sizes other than the ones they give you in like kits like this. But 90% of the time, it's one of these two. Tip of the day. Take your spark plug cap off first to see if it's the small one or the big one. Otherwise, you go grab the big one, then you take the spark plug wire off, and you realize it's got a small head. Then you gotta walk all the way back to your toolbox, which is way over there, a solid 4.4 feet from me, and you gotta grab the other one. No good! It's not a big deal, just some word of advice. Ha ha ha! It's one of the mod sizes. Upon further investigation, I checked the oil level. The oil level is good. I found a bad ground though. That had really nothing to do with anything. Well, it did, just not with the starting. Check the coolant level, that's good. Nothing came out of the cylinder. And that's really good because I didn't want to do carburetor work. The kid had paperwork on this thing and he just got done replacing the carburetor, which is right here. And I think he paid like 500 or $400 for that. So I cleaned up the spark plug. Now I'm getting ready to start this thing up. But before I go ahead and start this machine up, I'm gonna open up my overhead door because I'm gonna try to get out of here as quick as possible because something tells me that it's gonna smoke a lot. What's telling me that? Well, the fact that it did it last night. <laughs> Using my noggin. I don't know if you guys could see it, but it was smoking and it is smoking. But I don't think it's the four-wheeler's fault. I think it was just residue or is residue from when I took it apart. So I think I have a solution for this. It might be slightly illegal though. Maybe, maybe frowned upon. I like that word better. Sorry officer, I thought that was illegal. I mean frowned upon. <laughs> what I honestly was going to do was take this down the road and just, well basically warm it up, make sure everything works, make sure nothing's leaking. The only problem was, this 6,000 pound thing with four wheels. Me personally, I take that as a sign that I shouldn't be a complete asshole and drive down the road. That thing's a sign. What about you guys? Do you guys look up for signs too? I'm always looking for the signs, whether it's a good sign or a bad sign. I don't know. But basically, I'm just gonna 
simulate the same thing that I would do down the road, just right here. The only problem I have found so far was a small exhaust leak. And then I did find one other leak. I don't know if it's a coolant leak or if it's an oil leak. Right where this coolant line comes in. I don't know if you can see that, but right above the spark plug hole, it's wet right there. It's cleaning up like coolant. What I mean by that is oil would still leave like a residue because it's thick. And the characteristics of oil, it just always has a trace left over. No matter how clean you think you make something, there's always oil residue. If you can see in there, it's way drier. And I'm looking at this and it's slightly green, which is the color of the coolant. Later. What's your guys' favorite fast food chain? Mine's Burger King. A lot of people like Arby's, Wendy's. Leave it in the comment section, boys and girls. I'm having an oh crap moment. Now I know everybody's been in this predicament before, but mine just happens to be on a Craigslist run. Or if you could use Facebook, I don't know. I punched in, well, the city that this guy lives at, and it said that it was like an hour and 10 minutes away. I then left my house, trying to get to Harbor Freight before they closed, and I was about 30 minutes in the trip, maybe maybe even 40, and then it still said it would take an hour. I'm like, holy smokes, is this really gonna be worth it? Guess we'll find out. Just got the tires, feeling a little bit more happy. They're gonna make the Kodiak look fine. I, I don't even think I told you that. They're for the Kodiak. They're for the Kodiak. The Kodiak is a fine machine. Well, it wasn't to begin with, but since 3D Machines, you know, got his hands on it. He's sprucing up mighty fine, mighty fine. Here are my new tires. We're not gonna install them today. Hopefully tomorrow. Isn't that just how the world works? You do something and then it's always tomorrow. And then you get ready for tomorrow and it's tomorrow. It's never today. You prepare for tomorrow. But here they are, I got them at an incredible deal. I'm impressed with them. They have a lot of tread left. So I think the run was worth it. He did give me the water for free, which is really nice of him. This four-wheeler should do extremely well in the mud after I get these things on. Before I leave you for the day, does anybody know where I got the first scene clip thing I did today? What movie did I get that from? Leave it in the comment section below. Enjoy the rest of your day. Until tomorrow, 3D Machines out.